Hello and welcome to today's Transformation Manager blog. Today we'll be looking at creating cascades. So let's begin. So as we can see from last time, we had created our relationship on the source side and we were looking at migrating information from the turbine blade file related to the airplane into the engine related to the airplane. So an initial step to do would be to create the cascade. So we can add comments in to indicate that we're going to do the cascade. And we can simply drag and drop from the turbine blades relationship to the engine to put our mapping line in to call our cascade. Now, Usually when you're doing these things, it will be fine for us to use that cascade directly. As with this example that we're doing, we're actually using a parameter in our relationship. So again, if we open the relationship properties up and have a look at what we created last time, we can see here rather than using a value from our aeroplane, we're actually using a parameter that we're passing in, the $P1 there. So what we need to do when we're using that relationship is to set that parameter. And we do that, call an inbuilt function. Control space gives us the code completion. We can see there we can set params. And what we're actually gonna do is set the params on the two turbine blades relationship. It's parameter one. And we're gonna set it to what we'd already defined in our local plane code. And what you may recall from last time, is that the plane code needed to be padded out with leading zeros to a length of six in order to make it suitable to relate to our values in our turbine blades file. So now that we've added the set params, we are all good in this part of the transform. We can simply right click and hit navigate or create cascade. In this case, it'll be creating. You can see it's already selecting the elements that we want. So in this case, it's turbine blades and the engine. It's dependent. It's going to be called when we're running the airplane transform. And here we can see we've now created our initial turbine blades to engine cascade. You can see the elements have changed. We now have turbine blades and we have engine. So quite simply to start the mapping here, what we might want to do is move the engine ID across to the ID in the engine. So there we go, straight away we can see that we've, when we're moving the aeroplanes, we're also gonna come down to the turbine blame file and move information out of that into our engine table. So we'll now be populating two tables on our target. You can see there the aeroplane and the engine table. So at this point, we may be happy with that. So we can simply click the little build button to build our project. You can see that we have some warnings there. We'll accept those for now. And again, we can right click, launch the migrator. You can see we have our information still filled in for last time. So our input files coming in and our target database configured. We hit run. We can see there it's run successfully and we've written some information into our airplane and engine. So let's have a quick look at what's actually in those target tables. So firstly, we'll connect. We can use our alias. We can then view, say, the airplane data we could view the engine data. So there we can see we've got two engines loaded in. We have four aeroplanes. And again, if I want to have a look which engine the Concorde's using, I can right click, select the relationship. So in this case, it's engine. And there we can see in this case, the Concorde is using engine one, two, three. So all our relationships, our keys have all been set up along the way. And what we can see is there the engine used 
is actually the foreign key that's been populated. And that was the final element that we wanted to populate in our aeroplane table. So now that we've done that, we've completed our aeroplane and we've also started mapping our engines. Join me next time and we'll have a look at populating a little bit more of the engine transform. Thanks very much and goodbye.